There's a war going outside forever Can't walk around with your head down forever Hoping that it's just gonna get better Thinking that it's getting easier, you're so clever Where I come from, this is real weather Not a selfish game, just getting cheddar In your building, snuggled warm with your sweater Death on the outside, but you're so much better Padding numbers to write your letter In bold case, the header says Denomination, not the end of days Tax exempt for many ways While our children pay, while your offering stays Blood on the streets, death in so many ways Church. Maybe y'all too busy just playing church while the streets are cursed I can't look the way I do, they say For me to get behind a pulpit, they fade Word about what people say Not a difference, a hope in a better day It's a shame, I know he loves me anyway Me and the tax collector stand up to say You can have your walls and have your ways Out here in the cold where the praise stays The passion, I promise, will never fade So make sure you keep your barricade, your motor's played for getting paid. Not teaching hope when life's scared. Only last is made. Where's the hope in your parade? I am what you're not, I got to let you know This is real life, not just a show If you're worried about religion, let it go No saint could ever, ever save your soul Groundbreaking when I spit the flow Out during your tradition, it's time you show Denomination got more than four My focus is church outside your door Reaching with passion from shore to shore The truth we spit to make it poor One wrong not the appearance, but truly the core Former tribal chief of the Lenny Nalapi, Ramapo, is on his way. He has uh, uh, another sound system. So that's why we're a little delayed. So, so my brother here, Patiso, helped out here a little bit with his sound. Uh, gracias, Patiso. The young lady here, the, um, the Seth Morales, she has some uh, indigenous uh, drink that she wants to share with everyone before we start. It's 
Where are you, Mr. Lisa? 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 We're going to continue playing some music. Please don't go anywhere. I think she went. Okay, hello. My name is Dwight Curry. I'm here to support uh, American and Native, Native American Day uh, here at Columbus Circle. And I'm uh, Native American myself. I'm asking, uh, uh, sharing my comments uh, about the event. Uh, it is fulfilling. It's, um, it's uh, educational. And um, if you don't know uh, about the Native American heritage, sometimes you should come out to these events and uh, get the education on um, uh, our ancestry, where we come from, how we got here, and things of, things of this nature, ceremonies, powwows that we have. Um, I'm just here to say that I had a wonderful time, a great time, as I always do, and um, uh, we'd like to um, invite as many people out who want to come out and enjoy. Hello, hello, hello. All right, thanks. Okay. Sunday and it's Indigenous Day of Remembrance. This actually started about eight years ago at Columbus Circle. There was maybe a dozen of us. And in the last great in the last eight years it has grown tremendously. And this is a very, very, very important issue. Extremely important. This holiday needs to change. So every year we come out here not to dishonor Columbus but to honor our ancestors. That's the purpose of this. Our ancestors who suffered under the hand of Columbus and his men. So this is not an anti-Italian holiday at all either, because I don't know why everybody thinks that way. Uh, for the last eight years, this thing has gotten huge. It's getting bigger and bigger, and it's also all over the United States. It's not just in New York. And about nine cities so far has managed to have Columbus Day's name changed to Indigenous Day. So it's serving its purpose. It's definitely serving its purpose. And we're going to be out here next year, and we're going to be out here every year until they change the name of this holiday as I'm honoring this murder and this rapist. I just once again, just give the people your name. My name is Rodney Guatushina Rivera, Heart of Fire. I'm from the Guania section of the island, a body gang. And uh, it's a wonderful thing. It's a beautiful day out here, and we're all having a great time. Okay, thank you. Peace. So back, and a brain fall out. That's what they did to our ancestors' children. Can you picture your men and them checking how sharp is their knife on their bodies? Can you picture that? This is why we need you to sign a petition against this holiday because Columbus is not a man to be honored. So please, my name is Rosa Yesenia, also known as Niaro. We're gonna start that petition. As the guy just mentioned earlier, Please look for us. Look for the petition on change.org. It's going to be coming up soon. Get as many people as you can to petition because that's, that's unity and power and in numbers. This is how laws do end up changing. This is how we got nine states that, that was able to change because of petition. But we need to support each other and keep spreading the word. I believe in this. I believe in this. Now let me introduce who's coming up next. Jahamalku Pakwan, Director of Solar University. Musical Taitas Ancestral, Teachings for the Spirits. Yupachani, Yupachani. Yupachani does mean thank you in my language, uh, Quechua language from Peru, Bolivia, Ecuador, South America, Paraguay, Chile, Argentina. Hello, my name is Yesenia Rosa, also known as Niaro. I am part of Louis Ray Moore, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ, Jesus
neglect something that could only empower them in their future lives.
Y bueno, aquí estamos conmemorando un, un aniversario más de la resistencia indígena. Queremos que se, se, no se celebre más con un bus day porque es, es muy, 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 un insulto grande a las comunidades indígenas, puesto que Columbus fue un asesino, fue un criminal y hubo genocidio en las comunidades indígenas, los cuales siguen pasando porque el neoliberalismo, el capitalismo, sigue entrando a nuestras comunidades a robarles las tierras, a robarles sus recursos naturales y a robarles también las... Tenemos un grave problema porque las semillas orgánicas o criollas se están perdiendo porque están encontrando Monsanto que les están imponiendo a los campesinos a que siembre este, genéticamente modificado. Es muy importante que las comunidades indígenas uh, se les apoye, se les proteja y se les proteja el medio ambiente, el agua, el aire, el fuego, la tierra, son sagrados, son parte de nosotros y la importancia del respeto hacia ellos. ¿Por qué el, el ponernos nuestra ropa? ¿Por qué el rescatar nuestra comida? ¿Por qué el volver a ser? No somos mestizos, no somos hispanos, no somos latinos, somos indígenas que, seguimos, este, que nos siguen negando nuestra identidad, nuestro origen, nuestra cultura y nuestro, nuestra belleza. Es muy, muy importante que sigamos la resistencia indígena y que se aboli, se, no se celebre a Cristóbal Columbo, no se celebre, no se lave y exalten a los asesinos como, y criminales como Columbus, como uh, Bizarro, como Hernán Cortés, como tantos otros, como en el norte aquí que han cometido tantos genocidios hacia las comunidades indígenas. Es muy, muy importante. Que, que nosotros como indígenas levantemos la voz, que no existe, que no, que seguimos aquí en pie. Sí, lamentablemente lo que decía la compañera, no hay nada que celebrar, igual como lo que es, yo soy mexicano y como mexicano pues acá también, uh, yo estoy acá para pues dar a conocer y dar testimonio de todo lo que está ocurriendo en México, este 26 de septiembre se hizo un un año de la, del secuestro y la desaparición de los 43 desaparecidos, de los, de los 43 muchachos. Entonces, uh, tenemos que, que hacer algo, luchar y pedir justicia y hacer, hacerle llegar a todo el mundo lo que está pasando en México, porque lamentablemente nuestro gobierno pues, nos está matando, está matando a todos los indígenas por no, por no querer, uh, su, uh, no, no quiere que se, se siga superando, o no quiere, siempre quiere tenernos ahí como ignorantes. Es por eso que este gobierno pues trata de apagarnos y todo, es por eso que está desapareciendo y está matando a mucha gente, no solo son los 43, hay miles de personas desaparecidas, miles de personas que no saben eh, en dónde quedaron, dónde están, hay muchas cosas comunes, entonces yo estoy acá para, para dar a conocer más que nada en todos los medios qué es lo que está haciendo con nuestro gobierno, con, con, los, con los indígenas más que nada, con los estudiantes y con todo el mundo. Entonces debemos, debemos, espero que pues sigan apoyando también, esto es una manera de apoyo, de unirse aquí, de, no hay nada que celebrar este, el día de mañana que es el, el, una conmemoración de Columbus Day, pero pues, lo que sabemos, todos fueron unos asesinos, al contrario, vinieron a estafarnos, vinieron a quitarnos todas las riquezas, porque México es muy rico, es muy rico, pero pues todo es para, para otra gente que no nada tiene que ver con los indígenas. Y la, lamentablemente, pues los indígenas estamos como siempre jodidos. Pero ojalá y esta lucha siga adelante y ahora se va a ver el cambio porque la gente se está levantando. Al decir la gente, es el pueblo que se está levantando, está alzando la voz y esperemos que esto siga adelante y que dé buenos frutos en todo esto. Muchas gracias. Y también libertad a los presos políticos aquí en Estados Unidos a Leonard Peltier. Peltier y porque todos los indígenas que levantan la voz y que son... Uh, que defienden las comunidades indígenas, que defienden a su gente, son encarcelados, asesinados, acriminados. Entonces, ¿dónde está la democracia? ¿Dónde está la verdad? ¿Dónde está la justicia? No puede ser que solamente sea para los que tienen color blanco de piel, para los que tienen poder o los que tienen dinero. No, la justicia tiene que ser, tiene que ser 
total y para todos, justa, ¿no? Entonces, este, uh, creo que es muy importante, en, no hay nada que celebrar, hay que rescatar nuestras culturas, nuestras lenguas, nuestras tradiciones, nuestra música. Don Duet, Don Piquera. Y, y nuestra, nuestra, nuestra cultura, nuestras raíces, nuestras tradiciones, nuestro conocimiento, es muy importante que siga vivo. Si nosotros como indígenas seguimos vivos, todo el mundo va a estar vivo. O Meteo Bajo, Chicago Mexica, Sotamatli, Nicantlanca, pues somos Nicantlancas, no somos hispanos, no somos latinos, somos Nicantlancas. Yeah, so we're here, we're here about Indigenous Day of Remembrance. Uh, just give you feedback, you know, what Lewis Ramos does, you know, putting uh, this together. He's been doing this for so long that I, it's like the seventh one. He really puts his heart and soul into doing this event so much that life gets a little crazy for him, but right. um, it's always worth the effort. Um, like for me, even I couldn't be here the entire event, but just coming and hearing these right. drums for the you know final closing of the circle is very powerful. Um, it's very, uh, very powerful to honor your ancestors, and I, I am the kind of person I look around me and I see how people are reacting to everything. And uh, these people are getting off the subway and these drums are hitting them and they stop because they don't know what's happening but they feel the energy, they feel the good uh, vibration and so in turn I feel like he helps everyone honor their ancestors, even people who aren't necessarily thinking of it but they, they're walking by and they feel something and that's important because they're getting a message across uh, what this uh, day really means and what it should be. It should be his work. Okay, thanks. In person. Okay, Columbus Day represents one man, but it should be for all of us, all people. It should be an indigenous day. Okay, we're not here to uh, bash Columbus. He did what he did. Things happened that he did. Now it's time to go on. Okay, for us native people, it's, it's a kick in our butt every day because they say, oh, you know, what happened to us? But it's not only us, it's more than us. And it's time to change Columbus Day to Indigenous Day to some other day. Okay? A couple of states have done it already. A lot of cities have done it already. Eight. Eight, thank you. Eight, Eight states have done it already. So it's time. You know, that's all we're saying, you know, uh, uh, out of respect, you know, it's time. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please introduce yourself. Peace. This is Zulu King, Brother Shep, Universal Zulu Nation. Um, if you could just share your thoughts about Indigenous Day of Remembrance and what does our Indigenous uh, heritage represent to you and for your nation. Okay, um, for me, basically, this is an answer to uh, what basically has been 
decades and decades of misinformation about the oppressor who uh, basically use their religions and their military to wreak havoc on indigenous people throughout this planet in general, but on this continent in particular. Speaking primarily about the person known as Christopher Columbus, uh, giving credit for discovering America. Uh, I can discover people who are already here. And not only that, but just all of the things that followed his uh, so-called discovery. Uh, the initiation of child slavery, uh, the genocide of indigenous people here, and the whole manifest destiny of this country taking it over from uh, Sea the Shining Sea. And all the people who died, all the children who were massacred in the war, cavalry, so-called settlers, you know, not unlike the ones that are going on in Palestine now, it's the same exact thing going on today as it took place today. Um, reservations, which are really concentration camps, just on and on and on. For profit, for gold, for money, and greed. People were basically uh, almost wiped off the face of this country. So we come out today. Remembrance of those ancestors who passed, remembrance of the warriors who stood up and fought for uh, liberation, independence, and even survival. Okay, well, with that, I say thanks and peace. Peace. That means good morning in my uh, native language of Garifuna. Um, it's, Garifuna is a language and a culture that was uh, created in St. Vincent and the Lesser Antilles uh, in the Grenadines in the Caribbean. Um, I see a lot of brothers here from the Taino community, the Muscogee, and the other nations. We basically all one people. Um, I can say that my community, the Garifra community in St. Vincent, we resisted, and we're still resisting, but in the 1700s, we resisted the institution of slavery for 200 years. Um, Eventually, after two wars, which they call Carib Wars, treaties were signed, we were exiled to Honduras. So that's why we're currently in Honduras now. So my point is this, in regards to the history and this whole notion that Columbus discovered America, um, there's a lot of data that negates that. But then again, there's people that still believe that history. Um, my question is that, how could you discover a place where there were already inhabitants there? I mean, the Arawak people were there, the the um, Lokoyo, Lokono, the Siboné, uh, the Taino, all these people were in the Greater Antilles and the Lesser Antilles prior to Columbus getting there. Um, what's interesting about my heritage is that uh, I have three nations in me, the African, the Carib, and the Arawak which were created in the 1300s by a gentleman by the name of Mansa Musa. Um, I know I'm jumping around a little bit, but I want to cover a lot. There's a lot of ground to be covered. In saying that, somehow we have to create a, a, a great awareness of the actual history of America. And I think this meeting that we're having right now is a, is a great conversation piece. We have to engage people in that conversation. Um, Lewis and I, we're going to start a petition. We're going to get the elected officials involved for this day to be changed. I mean, Columbus is not, Columbus did not discover us. We discovered him. <laughs> we actually discovered him. He didn't discover us. We discovered him. He was basically trespassing in our land. So, as I indicated before, we're going to create a petition. I want you guys to engage with us. My name on Facebook is Garifuna Pablo Duvalle. Uh, Garifuna Duvalle Pablo Blanco. Add me on Facebook. We're going to create the petition in the forthcoming weeks. And let's just talk about the history again from our perspective. Because we have our own perspective. We have a lot of uh, scholars that are on our side. So on many levels, that history can be debunked. From the scholarship, from the oral tradition that we have, all the nations all have the same history. We were here. There's no way that we could continue uh, to honor someone that didn't discover us at all. So let's, take, let's get engaged. Like I said, my name on Facebook is Garifuna Duvalle Pablo Blanco. 
and the petition will circulate amongst us. Unfortunately, in this country, we have to have numbers for an issue, and we need those numbers for the elected officials to pay attention, the senators, you know, and the legislators, and so forth. Facebook is a is a great way to start. We'll share it. We'll email it. Matter of fact, I think we need to get everyone's uh, email address so we could create a mailing list, Lewis. So we could get this conversation going because the history is very important. I mean, we have all the communities, and I see the the sister from Guerrero. Um, a lot of people they're experiencing the same aggression that all indigenous people in South America are experiencing. We in Honduras, we're definitely experiencing it because of tourism and globalization and all these foreign factions that want to come into our territory and, and basically ex exile us again. Um, if that happens, that will be for my community the second exile. First it was from St. Vincent, now it's going to be from Honduras. So, we are currently resisting in Honduras by the form of taking the issue to the International Court of Justice. And that's one way that we uh, have been resisting. I think the other indigenous communities should do the same thing as well. Let's take it to the law. We have all the proof. We should take it to the courts, just like the other indigenous communities here in America do as well. Um, once again, Sereme Hong Sui Du and you. That means uh, thank you to everybody or family. And uh, add me on Facebook, add Louis on Facebook. Garifla Duvalier, Pablo Blanco, and let's start, this, this, let's continue having this conversation online and eventually change Columbus Day to Indigenous Day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Pablo Blanco. I'm here at the um, Indigenous Day, uh, Remembrance Day, um, at uh, Merchant's Gate on 59th Street. And the event was a success, or well, is a success, because it's still going now. What I got from it was totally engaging with all the other indigenous communities throughout South America, Central America, and North America as well. Because we're basically all the same community. Um, we deal with many of the things that this capitalist system has imposed on us. Um, exile, which happened to my community. Uh, forced migration, uh, the whole colonial, um, um, I would say, wave that hit us. Um, what I find fascinating is that through that, we find a way to continue our culture um, by passing it down to our, our children and so forth. But what we need to do, do now is kind of make that into a 2.0 version of that. We need to just step it up to a different level by using the same, by using our tools that are available to us, the marketing and the promotion, we have to use these tools. Um, that's one of the reasons why I agreed to this video because YouTube, we could share and disseminate information irrespective of geographic boundaries. And I'm just excited to be here. I look forward to creating a pivotal role next year. Um, we're working, well, I'm working with uh, Lewis in regards to uh, building a petition so that we could have an Indigenous Day instead of Columbus Day in New York. So we're starting the talks right now in, in regards to that movement. Um, if anyone wants to follow me, you can follow me on Facebook. My name on Facebook is Garifuna Duvalle Pablo Blanco. Um, I'm from the Garifuna community in Honduras by way of St. Vincent. Uh, we have a very long and extensive history in the Caribbean. Uh, matter of fact, the language that we speak uh, is 95% uh, Arawak. So, Garifuna is the uh, language and the culture that I practice. Um, which is odd, because here in New York City you get bombarded with so many uh, signals that will veer you away from the culture, but my uh, strong matrilineal um, family, basically my mother and my grandmother, they kept, they instilled a strong Garifuna identity in me. 
So that's why I'm here with the brothers from the Taino community, the Muscogee, the Cherokee, and all the other indigenous communities in South America, because I kind of identify with them. Even though I look, I don't know, African American, Caribbean, the dark skin throws a lot of people off, <laughs> and the name throws them off even right. more, Pablo Blanco. But that's just part of the uh, colonization. The reason I got my name was because uh, during the exile from St. Vincent to uh, Honduras, we weren't allowed into the mainland of Honduras until we converted to Catholicism. So through that process is where we got the uh, Hispanic or the Spanish names. The Blanco, the Arzú, the, the, the Torres, the uh, Gaviola, all these Spanish names came through that experience. And um, yeah, we are gonna, what we plan to do is basically create a network of indigenous people so we can talk, so we can start the conversation regarding the issues that all of us have. That's basically what this uh, Remembrance Day is all about. And to change that name from Columbus to Indigenous. Because that's, that's a step in the right direction. Um, and uh, that's basically it. I don't know what else you want me to yeah, say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's cool, more that's cool. Questions for me? Yeah. Um, if you just uh, talk about a little bit how important is the language and how did the language have an impact on the colonization? We can wrap it up. Well, my, my heritage, I mean, they fought 200 years colonization, against colonization in the Miss Antilles. Um, the last stronghold was in St. Vincent. You know, after two wars, we were exiled. But the language was preserved uh, via the spirituality. But we were uh, in Bali Seoul, which is the island off the coast of, of uh, St. Vincent for nine months. We practiced our spirituality without any food, shelter, and so forth. We saw other family members die. It was our spirituality that uh, helped us weather that, sh that storm. So the language is crucial to a culture in the sense that um, many things cannot be translated from Garifuna to English. Um, certain words that are in Garifuna cannot be translated in English because there isn't, they, the words basically do not exist. Garifuna is an Arawak language. It's 5,000 years old, way before these European languages uh, came into existence. So the language is crucial to us right now in the sense that it's 5,000 years old, the culture relies on the language so much that it's impossible to have a Garifuna culture without the language. It's basically impossible, it won't happen. So, um, I was fortunate enough to grow up with my grandmother who taught me the language. And I'm, I'm very fortunate in the sense that I see my other friends who don't know the language and they kind of don't see the connection in regards to the culture and so forth and the history. I think I, I have that connection via the language. Because right now, one of the things that I'm doing is um, analyzing the history. We have a lot of old tradition that we have from the elders in my community in Honduras. So what I'm doing is that I'm just basically comparing and contrasting with the books that I'm reading here in uh, North America, pretty much. And just draw a conclusion from that and hopefully write a book about my experience. That would be the next stage. All right, that's cool. With that, I say peace. All right. All right. Peace, everyone. Again, add me on Facebook, Garifuna Pablo Duvalle. Garifuna Duvalle Pablo Blanco. That's Garifuna Duvalle Pablo Blanco. Salute.